What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, and for today's Madden 21 Fantasy Draft Rebuild Challenge, I said to you guys after we were on 2-3 rebuild losing streak, that we needed a challenge that would kind of weigh in our favor, that would give us a really pretty strong roster to start out with, and odds on say that we should be able to win, like last rebuild we did was tough, we had to rebuild a team and, and draft a team, of everyone that only had normal dev traits. So right there, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. So I wanted to challenge that still while being a challenge, still while having handicaps to building and drafting our roster, we still should end up with a outstanding crop of players and be able to compete for a Super Bowl. Because, you know, let's be honest, we want to get back into the win column. So today, because this is something that you can, you know, reapply to a bunch of different drafts, we're going to start where, you know, it just kind of means more. You know, so today in our Madden 21 Fantasy Draft Rebuild Challenge, we will be only allowed to draft players that play in the SEC. Go Gators! So, I mean, that it's probably the easiest conference to start out with. Probably the most overpowered conference. It's the best conference in college football. And they, they constantly produce the best NFL players. And you honestly could probably just make a team of just Alabama and LSU players. But we're going to have all of the teams in the SEC at our disposal to build our 53 so obviously we'll just show you guys the first 10 picks or so then we'll regroup when i have the full team completed and we'll see just how scary it is but the big question is where are we going to be picking because if we're picking early we're gonna have to completely change this draft because i'm like all right we're picking top 15 we might be in contention first round to get just make sure we get our quarterback because sec historically has not been producing great quarterbacks so there's really just two big guys that you want to get off the get-go either joe burrow which is going to be my ideal first pick or to a tag of Iloa, who you know does slip a little bit we may be able to gamble and try to get to in the second round and then the first round we could look at you know a derrick henry or a julio jones or someone on the back end of the defense like a marlon humphrey or something like that so it's going to be very, very interesting to see where we pick. Let's just get into it right now. And we're... We have the number one overall pick. Awesome. Wasn't prepared for this. Let me go check my notes. Yeah, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm, there's a lot of options. Like I said, you can go Marlon Humphrey. You can get Derrick Henry. But those guys could be there in the second round. With the number one overall pick, we got to get you know what we know is a superstar dev quarterback. What we know is a guy that can win a Super Bowl. So without further ado, at number one overall, this actually might be the first time in any fantasy draft I've ever done. I've never, you know, it's never really been a prevalent series on the channel, but I've done fantasy drafts almost every Madden in some form, even just if it's a live stream. I don't think I've ever had the number one overall pick, so hopefully this is the right decision. I know there's someone out there going, oh, no, Joe Burrow's almost always there in the second round. Still, I'm still not there yet. I'm not a seasoned vet in the fantasy draft, but let's grab Joe Exotic, Joe Burrow from LSU. First overall, and he's number 76 in true value. I don't care. We got our quarterback. Second round, no, it's probably not smart to go running back. We have two pretty damn good options here in Alvin Kamara and Josh Jacobs. Because he's young, I will just grab Josh Jacobs here. 22, number 43 in true value. All right, here's where it's tough. Here's where my inexperience, because I don't know, is Julio going to be there in the fourth round because he's old? Because if he is, I'm, uh, you know, Eddie Jackson probably should be our pick here at free safety. There's going to be a big drop off. Eddie Jackson goes, the next best free safety that we can probably get is Marcus May. My Gator Bias is fine with that. Is Eddie Jackson a superstar dev? He's only a star dev. I know Cream Jackson lasts a while because he's old. Alabama, we can get that spot figured out. Ah, let's, just, let's not overthink it. Let's just get Julio Jones. He's an X-Factor. We'll hold on to his rating fairly well. Let's be honest. I'm not expecting this to particularly be a five-year rebuild. I want to win it within the first two, three years. And that's where Julio's still going to be at his best. So third round, we will get Julio Jones. Now I'm just pretty much out of spot. Like we should just get the best young players, best guys that can grow and develop in case this does go a little bit longer. So I'm looking at it. Damn it, I thought Fletcher Cox might still slip there. That's fine. What about edge rushers? You got Ingram, but he's old. Houston's old. Any young SEC, I mean, Fowler's still got some upside. Carl Lawson, uh, Quinnen Williams. Quinnen Williams, maybe sliding him into D-tackle. I love using him in the Jets rebuild, actually. Um... I'm going to go, we'll get Roquan Smith here, middle linebacker, and then I'll see in the next round. If well, We'll just keep right here. I, I have a plan. I this all planned out. I'm going to get Roquan Smith here. I want to get Quinn and Williams at pick five. Come on, still be there. Still be there. Come on, baby. Yes. 
Quinton Williams, pick 578. We're going to slide him into D tackle. His rating should go up to about an 80. So again, 22. And then in the sixth round, I'm thinking that maybe we see who well, we'll get AJ Green again, super old. Well, what do we got? Do we have any young SEC receivers? Come on, there gotta be something. DJ Shark, 2381, AJ Brown, 2380. How that's weird though. That Shark and AJ Brown both are the same rating. But uh, let's get AJ Brown. I feel like just filling out the skill position players is where we should be going here. So we'll get AJ Brown. Is Chark still there? If Chark is still there, we'll get DJ Chark. So our wideouts are done. Don't need to worry about. We got Julio and Chark on the outside. AJ Brown can handle the slot. Deron Payne just went off the board, which is a little bit annoying. It's OJ Howard still here. We got Jordan Reed. If you want a little bit more of a veteran, we'll get OJ Howard. 25, 80, probably the best young SEC tight end. And then round nine, I mean, we're not, we're not really going defense. All things considered, we're not really grabbing the SEC's known for its defense. Geno Atkins is still there. We can get a veteran. There's some Kinlaw. You got Hidden Dev. How old Atkins? 32. That's a little old. That's, uh... Let's grab Kinlaw here, because I know he's a dev trait. 22, young defense player, should be able to go up. And then with our final selection, let's see if we can get some on the back end. Is Kareem Jackson still? Okay, Kareem Jackson's gone. But Landon Collins is still there at strong safety. At free safety, not much. At corner, we got some veterans. Dunbar, who's, who's the youngest? We need a young corner here. We should be able to get one a little bit later. There's no way that, like, in terms of age, Levi Wallace is the oh, He is. All right, screw it. Let's get, uh, let's get Landon Collins at strong safety. That'll be our final pick. I'll finish the rest of this SEC draft. And again, I already know there's probably some people that do drafts all the time. Like, oh my God, he could not have screwed up that draft order anymore. Again, it's a learning process. We're only going to get better. All right, so here's a full view of our roster. We're 81 overall, 84 offense, 79 defense. This is a little bit weird because usually you think of SEC. You think of defense first. Or maybe that's just me and my old way of thinking. But let's meet our roster so, quarterback, it's, you know, luckily injuries are off. We're not going to rely on the backup, but we have Joe Burrow and Chad Kelly. At running back behind Josh Jacobs, we got TJ Yeldon and Kishon Vaughn, the rookie out of Vandy. Fullback, we have Blasting Game from Vandy. On wide receiver behind Julio Jones, A.J. Brown, and D.J. Chark, which you saw the picks. We got Demarcus Robinson from Florida, Robert, Robert Foster from Alabama, and Van Jefferson, the rookie out of Florida. Tight end behind O.J. Howard, we got Jay Sternberger out of A&M. Offensive line, we got Jedrick Wills and Charles. Elton Jenkins, James Carpenter, center would be Mike Pouncey and Lloyd Cushenberry. Right guard, Trey Turner and Stenberg. Right tackle, Andrew Thomas and Isaiah Wilson. Two young tackles from Georgia. On the defense, you had to get a little bit creative. Uh, edge rushers was a little bit difficult. Same with outside linebackers. So an edge rusher, we're going Leonard Floyd. Uh, you know, maybe. Maybe this is what he needs to kind of turn his career around. Behind that, we got Zaniga and Marquise Haynes. At right end, we got Caleb on Chaison, the rookie on the Jacksonville Jaguars. We got John Grenard and Juan on behind. That's lots of youth on the defensive line. D tackle, we got Quinton Williams and Kinlaw. Beyond that, we got Jordan Elliott and Daylon Mack. Outside linebacker, here's where we're getting a little creative. Even though Hampton's the highest rated, Abrams tank, man. John Abrams, shout out to the old Raiders franchise. He is a beast when we move in the linebacker, so we're going to have him there. And as you know, when you just have normal dev outside linebackers, they just happen to go up dev trait. Very, very easily in this game. So we're going to have Abram on one side. Inside, we're going to have Roquan Smith. Behind that, we have Jared Davis and Phillips. And then on the other side, we got a veteran here, Thomas Davis Sr., but Willie Gay Jr., the linebacker of Mississippi State, who also is on a normal dev, who's also an outside linebacker. Him and Abram are going to be our two outside linebackers with the gamble that they're both going to go up dev trade, which is what we're looking for on the back end of this defense. Uh, secondary, no dev trades, but they're solid players for sure. Levi Wallace, Carlton Davis, Greedy Williams, Joan Williams, and Noah Igbangnahi make up a, you know, everyone's on the right side of 25 for the most spot. So hopefully we get a dev trait here or there to help out this unit. Free safety, we got Mike Edwards and Jalen Mills. Strong safety, Landon Collins and Eric Reed. And on special teams, we have the best kicker I've ever seen in the SEC, Eddie Pinato. And then at punter, we have the hidden dev rookie out of AM, Braden Mann. So I'm happy with this. I'm also going to throw in another caveat is that when we get to the drafts, I can only draft players from the SEC. So that's going to put a, maybe a little bit more importance on building the players that we currently already have on our roster because it's absolute crapshoot 
with where the schools these Madden generated draft classes are going to be uh, kind of piling from and picking from because you know even though it should be kind of loaded with SEC talent, you will see, you know, eight guys in the first round that play like FCS or schools you've never heard of. So that's going to be maybe, you know, makes it a little bit more challenging given the fact that, you know, picking from a fantasy draft from the SEC talent was kind of overpowered. So let's get into it, man. Year one, SEC only. We're playing on Atlanta because why not? Atlanta, Dirty South, Georgia. I think we should be good. I think we should be pretty good. Week four, we got an F trade. Carlton Davis going from normal to a star dev after a 20 to 17 week four victory over the Green Bay Packers. So at the midway point, uh, I've been kind of just picking at the contracts because, you know, not really much to talk about year one, year two, because they're just guys that we get at the end of the draft. But I will say that if you're young with the idea that we have to draft players from the SEC, if, they're not, if they don't exist, if there's no one there, it's key to keep the young players that we know for sure. So Wano 22, Davis 24, Wilson 21, Pretty much everyone outside of Chad Kelly, and then you look at Kyrie, who's 31, and Haynes is 26. If you're on the right side of 25, I'm going to try to resign you just because I can't guarantee that I'll be able to replenish this team with younger players through the draft. But we're killing it. Six and three, first place in the South, only up a game. It's competitive. The Saints and Bucks all look like they're going to be pretty damn good. Look at the stats here. Quick look. Joe Burrow is playing like a top five quarterback, third in yards, sixth in touchdowns, roughly around the midway point of the season. Uh, Dev traits. Have been unveiled for some of them. Joe Burrow, superstar. Uh, Jedrick Wills is star. We got Andrew Thomas with a star. Don't know if we had any on the defense outside of obviously Carlton Davis who earned his star. Kinlaw, there we go. He had a star dev trait as well. So yeah, feeling optimistic that the SEC team will find a way to get the playoffs in year one. And we're only going to get better. Generally, this is a very young team. Okay, so at the end, of, we, we actually have an outstanding season, and we still have to run the gauntlet. 12-4, and four, not good enough to get a first-round bye, but good enough to get the divisional title. And I can't wait to see Julio Jones now. Julio Jones got player of the week like four times, and every time it was like three-plus touchdowns. So I'm expecting ridiculous numbers. I mean, this team was outstanding. I don't know what formula, what sort of chemistry, outside of all being from the SEC, that... Really put this all together. But this is like one of the best straight up sim seasons I think I've seen. If not, like for sure top five. Um, so yeah. I, I imagine we're going to be like one of the best teams. Joe Burr. Well, Joe Burr was amazing. 51, almost 5,200 yards, 44 touchdowns, nine picks. I mean, okay, we got to be argumentative. I, I think nine touchdowns or nine picks could be a little high, a tad high, but amazing. Uh, you know, we might have an MVP. On our hands here, ladies and gentlemen. Run the ball. Josh Jacobs, 1,500 yards, 19 touchdowns. We still got six touchdowns from Yeldon, two from Kashawn Vaughn. All right, what did Julio do? Eh, that's what I thought. 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns for Julio Jones. We had 11 and 8 for A.J. Brown, almost 11 and 9 for O.J. Howard, almost a thousand, almost th four th 3,000 yard receivers, 4,000 yard receivers total, including the tight end. All right. Note this self, Atlanta Falcons playbook. Defense, let's see. Thomas Davis, the veteran, led the team in tackles, 113. Roquan, 108. Sacks are pretty damn good. 11 and 11 for the rookie Javon Kinlaw, 10 and a half for Leonard Floyd. Flourished as a defensive end now, not as a 3 4 outside linebacker. 5 and a half for the Chasson. That's probably like. Chasson and Quinton Williams, probably the only two disappointing numbers of the bunch. Interceptions could have also been a little bit better. Three for Carlton Davis, two for Jonathan Abram, two for Levi Wallace. Uh, but hey, at least Carlton Davis won a dev trait midseason. That's huge for this back end of this defense. Overall, easily we'd have the number one offense. How much of a number one? I mean, by 600 yards, that's a, that's a pretty sizable lead. That's like one. This might be like, note to self, Falcons playbook. If we're ever like year five in a rebuild and things aren't going well. Definitely not the defensive playbook, but offensive playbook for sure. Yearly Awards MVP went to Joe Burrow. So hopefully he'll be an X Factor come next season. We'll have, well, even if there's an X, we might win the Super Bowl. This might be one and done. I kind of hope it almost isn't because I want to see how good this team can get. But I'll take a dub. Uh, offensive player, they went to Joe Burrow. Josh Jacobs at four. Uh, defensive player, they went to Eric Kendricks. Be nothing. Uh, offensive rookie, they went to Joe Burrow. Beautiful. Defensive rookie, they went to Patrick Queen. Kinlot, number two. That's actually, I mean, obviously, Queen got a lot of tackles, but 11 TFLs, 11 sacks for a D tackle. That might be good enough for defensive rookie of the year in my books. Uh, Shea Song coming in at number eight. 
Best quarterback went to Joe Burrow. Best running back went to Josh Jacobs. Best wide receiver went to Julio Jones with A.J. Brown at seven. Best lineman, uh, we might have a couple guys. Usually the best team just automatically gets some linemen. Elton Jenkins at six. Trey Turner at ten. Best D lineman went to Daniil Hunter, one of the few SEC players that we missed out on uh, that I really would have loved to have, but obviously just you can't get them all. Kinlock coming in at number eight. Leonard Floyd at ten. Linebacker went to Chandler Jones. Uh, DB went to Pat Pete, Marlon Humphrey back to back to you know another two more SEC players that we missed out on. Um, probably could have used them on the back end of this defense. And for kicker, Pinato at number nine. So this is outstanding. The old, literally my only complaint is uh, we should have got a first round bye, man. Twelve and four. I mean, who had a better record? 49ers. I don't know what the tiebreaker was, but I feel like uh, tiebreaker should be the fact that we had no one else had five hundred points. And we had one of the, I mean, okay, defensively, we were kind of the shits. Well, one of the worst defenses in the league. But offensively, I don't, that might be the most points I've ever scored in a single season. So, uh, a weird thing I guess we can bring up is that I didn't have any offensive scenarios. Even like hopping and go play. Like it wasn't like at one point, Shark, Jacobs, A.J. Brown, any of these guys had a chance to go up to like another dev trade because I probably maybe would have considered hopping in. To try to cheese it a little bit. I never even had one of those pop up. Literally, we were one for one with Carlton Davis. So that might be another thing that I could complain. I mean, given the fact, especially on this defense, how many guys that are still rocking normal devs and starting that didn't get a dev trade scenario is a little bit weird. Or how prolific this offense was for AJ Brown, a thousand yard receiver. Chark, almost a thousand yard receiver, not to get one dev trade scenario. Uh, Josh Jacobs almost had, what, 20 freaking touchdowns, not one dev trade scenario. It's a little weird. It's a little same OJ Howard. Tight ends generally get dev trade scenarios. He was almost a thousand yard, or he was over a thousand yards, right? Over a thousand yards for a tight end. Might be the most prolific tight end in the NFL this season. And we didn't get one dev trade. So um hopefully, if there is a year two, we will have a bunch of dev trades. The dev trades coming in for everybody, which will make this team even more overpowered. But it all starts here. Year one. In the wild card against the 9-7 and seven Packers. How can this not be the way it should be, huh? How can this not be a dominant victory for the Atlanta Falcons? Let's find it. You guys ever just get what is love stuck in your head? Because that's that's where I'm at right now on this beautiful Monday morning. Uh, finding out that my Xbox X that I pre-ordered is going to be here the 20th. Two business two business weeks ahead of the re uh, behind the release date. Fuck Canada Post. And Best Buy. Right there, bud. Right there. I know that's first world problems. A lot of people didn't even get a pre-order. And I'm kind of lucky. But also, right there. All right, let's see how we play in the Sim. Uh, I'm optimistic, man. I mean, the Sim gave us an MVP. So clearly, we have a working formula here with this all-SEC team, which should carry over into the Sim, right? One would think. But uh, still looking for our first touchdown of the first half. There we go. I think I might come in on the next third down, offensively, help them out. Maybe take a shot. I want, I want to see what this Julio Jones connection is like. I don't think I've ever played with Julio Jones. Just one of those players that, like, you know, for rebuilds and stuff like that, it never never lines up. So let's see. Can we? That's a good route for Julio. He gets to the outside. Let's that's just, that's just move the chains. That's all we need. Let's move the chains. A keep to leave. Pretty old. Pretty slow. It's a good matchup for us. There we go. Able to get a touchdown. They had a turnover. Two touchdowns in the span of like a minute for the Atlanta Falcons. That's awesome. But that 29th ranked defense is not really helping us out here. What should help us out is Josh Jacobs running the ball and just killing this game off. Which we do. And it's a one point victory. Maybe a little closer comfort. But Joe Burrow is playing sensational. Look at that, man. Like the, Everything looks as kind of advertised. Joe Burrow... Three on almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, over 100 yards for Josh Jacobs, over 100 yards for Julio Jones, almost over 100 yards for A.J. Brown. This is a damn good team. Let's keep this rolling. All right, in the division round, we have the 11-5 and five Detroit Lions. As we'll see what they're working with. Oh, they actually look pretty damn good. They only have three X-Factors, no other superstars, but it's a Tom Brady, Mike Evans, and Derrick Henry-led offense. And given the fact that our defense is the biggest weakness of this squad, a little bit worried this could be a shootout. All right, as you may notice, may, may not have. Dan Quinn's still the head coach. Captain Mir, he's a Gator guy, Florida Gators DC back. He was probably the best DC we've ever had. So I decided to keep him on here. Hopefully he can get his defensive unit to play like he did some of those great years in Florida. Or even, hey, just channeling a little Legion of Boom from the Seattle Seahawks days. 
So we're kind of trading here. Heavyweight belt, 7-7. Seven, seven. We know that offense is what they do best. They should know that offense is what we do best. And we're going to the second half, tied up 14. Detroit gets the first blood in the second half, but we come down and equalize 21-21. Everything to play for here in the fourth quarter. We hold them to a field goal. I will come in on this third down. Is it third and short? Third and long. Third and 10. Dare I say, let's find Julio Jones yet again. A game that, according to Madness, is three turnovers on both sides. I mean, those could just be easily turnover on downs, as they would be interceptions. And we got A.J. Brown. Oh! I thought that was picked. Three picks, Joe Burrow. That is not that is not MVP-like. But we're still moving. We're rocking and rolling, baby. Oh, here we go. We get the touchdown. Defense needs to stop. And they turn it over. Old man Brady turns it over. And it's over another close one. 35-32. Joe Burrow will ignore the fact that he had three picks. And just look at the positives. 300 yards, four touchdowns. Way better completion percentage than Tom Brady. Julio feasted. A.J. Brown feasted. Yeah, I think I've seen enough firsthand in the sim that this Atlanta Falcons offensive book is ridiculous. Offered championship game against the 11-5 Cardinals. What do they smell like? They only have one X-Factor in Von Miller. Uh, Bakhtiari, Hudson, Byron Jones, C.J. Henderson, and Cordero Patterson. So, uh, well, I guess look at this. They have two SEC players that we could have potentially drafted in C.J. Henderson and Von Miller. It looks, it's a solid team. It is definitely a solid team. We're evenly matched, 85s across the board. Super Bowl on the line. Let's do it. All right, come on. We've been, we've been scoring points on everybody. I don't think it stops with the team that just kind of has Von Miller. So we get the first touchdown of the game, but Arizona goes down the field to tie it up. I feel like this is going to be... Oh, we miss an extra point. This is going to be a game where whatever team sells for field goals, I feel like is going to lose. And it looks like that very well might be Arizona. But we both just trade field goals here. And we're going to look like we're going to go into halftime with a lead, which we do. Defense is actually playing pretty damn well. 10 points, 13 points through three quarters of play. That's actually... That's pretty... That's quite proficient. But then again, you looked at their offense. There wasn't really any absolute game changer there. So we get a 10-point lead under two minutes to go. Don't be the Atlanta Falcons in real life. Just close this game out, which we do 40-27. They had Tua. Okay. Tua versus Joe Burrow. Really, you know, the question of who was going to be our franchise quarterback at the beginning of this draft. But what, just how come, I mean, Julio Jones and A.J. Brown, outstanding players. But it's just, in a sim, they're both, every single game so far, have been like automatic 100-plus yards. All right. Super Bowl. I'm almost... I want to win a Super Bowl. We need a win really, really badly. And at the sacrifice of how interesting this Atlanta Falcons team could be, if we can cash in on that Super Bowl, I'll take it. But I will say right now, before we get into the Super Bowl, if we do lose, the silver lining is I think this Falcons team is going to be that much better next season. I just want to see all the dev traits and how crazy things can get. We're at the end of the season. We know Joe Burrow won the MVP. So just a casual plus five. And he's now a superstar X Factor. So I swear to God, does he have trust? It looked like he had trust. Why? Why? No, come on. Come on. Come on, man. Trust ability for Joe Burrow? Eh. <laughs> oh, that's just... Whatever. Uh, we also had X-Factor for Josh Jacobs went up. I think he got bulldozer. Oh, look, that makes sense. Freight train. Huge. He went up Dev trade. Nothing for Chuck or AJ Brown. A little bit surprised. I thought AJ Brown might have won up something. I definitely thought OJ Howard would go up a Dev trade. Uh, on the defensive side, uh, Willie Gay went up Dev trade to a star. Abram went to a star because they're outside linebackers. It's pretty much automatic. So there we go, man. Gear it up for the Super Bowl. I actually almost just think because he got Truss, I want to win this one because Joe Burrow with Truss. What? Uh, let's see what this Bills team looks like. They're an 85. They're a damn good team. They got Tyreek Hill. Uh, Allen Robinson, Baker Mayfield. So, again, a very offensive, heavy star team, which we've been able to kind of endure, which we've been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe throughout this entire playoff run. So, I'm optimistic we'll be able to just nip this one in the bud, win a Super Bowl, cash out, and a successful fantasy draft rebuild challenge in the books on the channel. Let's go. Still still, still got Hadaway's What Is Love stuck in my head. Maybe that's what I just need. I need to just... Just need to play it. Even at the risk of this video getting copyright strike. Just it, this video needs some some Night at the Roxbury soundtrack. All right, seven seven. Uh, Bills defense playing pretty well here. 
Still uh, struggling. We only got one touchdown in the first. I feel like we come in here. Maybe try to tie it up. Third and two. We have all our new abilities. Can't wait to use Trez ability with uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, let's see. Isn't it based on your archetype? What archetype does Burrow have? I guess he's improviser, right? Probably shouldn't have that. Oh, we got Julio. We got Julio. Back corner of the end zone. You are not keeping up with Julio Jones, whoever 29 was. I don't think so. Bryce Callahan. Yeah, let's put a 5-9 corner on Julio Jones. See how well that works. Just picking on the mismatch. Second half. Let's see what we can do. Can we? We're in the red zone. We get the touchdown. Go ahead, Tutty. Third down on 11. Can I? Oh, I want to kind of come in and go double dig. I want to come and use Josh Jacobs. I, I just love power backs. I miss Josh Jacobs. We was He was probably one of my favorite. Probably, I don't even say one of. I think he was my favorite aspect of that Madden 20 Raiders franchise, which is like, you know, there's just something about using a power back. That's satisfying to me. Oh my God. Julio Jones, pretty soft coverage. The superstar ability helps him out with the cut there. Ching, ching. Moving on. Making money. That wasn't something that was, a, you know, YouTube, if you're, if you're just looking at this YouTube, that was not a racist thing. That is a money sign. That's a making a sound of money, okay? Please, for the love of God, don't demonetize this. Because it's looking good, baby! The Falcons have won the Super Bowl. A team of SEC players. It just means more, baby. It just means more in the SEC. Out duels. Uh, a Bills team that was solid hell of a run for Buffalo yet another Super Bowl loss with that five for their organization but I again Atlanta what we found out in today's video is a Atlanta Falcons offensive playbook anyways I mean this could have been known information I just it, I just stumbled upon it today for the first time and it, you know I don't generally think that Atlanta is like overpowered you know Matt Ryan's not a parental MVP guy you don't see always Julio Jones leading the league in receiving. Like, he probably should. It's just, you know, you've always just thought the Bears offense is OP. The Saints offense is OP. And there you have it, Joe Burrow. Trusability X-Factor winning the Super Bowl MVPs. Covered in mud. Very much uh, an SEC style. So it's successful. I mean, for this style, we still could obviously do uh, the Pac-12, Big 10, Big 12, ACC to kind of round up, the, you know, the Power 5s. And then maybe we could do a non-Power 5 video. But there's... You know, in the in the bubble of a challenge of using a conference, there's still plenty of options to go. And the SEC, as expected, set the bar very, very high. So let me know in the comments what you want to see. Keep on keeping on with the suggestions. Like every single video, I'm seeing to at least add at least one, if not two to three different ideas and, and, and stuff like that for fantasy draft rebuilds. But obviously, like I said, we can just keep on keeping on here. Not necessarily in a row, but the next one could very well just be, you know, Pac-12 players because the precedent has been set that a team of SEC players has been simply outstanding. So that does it for me today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. We're working our way to 150,000 subscribers. Would love to hit that before the beginning of the new year. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. The likes help these videos in the old YouTube algorithm. If you want this series to keep catching on, more people to enjoy it, and more better ideas to come in, that is a great way to help it out and show your support for the channel. But that does it for me here today, guys. Thank you for watching, and until next time, it's C4 saying peace out and go Gators.